Fab. So, um, firstly, happy birthday, um, Hope for State of Manchester. Um, it's a fantastic organisation, and I really appreciate the opportunity to talk. So, thank you, Abby, for getting in touch. So, yeah, um, I'm Lydia. Lovely to see a few familiar faces and to meet new people. So, hello. And yeah, I'm going to be talking about my transition from chemistry to data science. If my slides move, there we go. So uh, I guess a good place to start is my like educational background. So I was I always enjoyed like maths at school, so I was pretty good at that. But I was interested more in the science kind of things, like how the body works, and that ultimately influenced my decision to go to the University of Nottingham and undertake an integrated masters in medicinal and biological chemistry. Um, not gonna lie, I found university quite challenging. Um, <laughs> especially well I don't think any course at university is particularly easy but it's uh yeah the high contact hours the amount of information to retain I as I developed along the masters it was very clear that I'm like much more practically minded so it was the laboratory um kind of courses that I did a lot better in um so during my like the summer between the third year and my master's year, I took kind of like a, a short project in a research group. And then I did a, um, it was an integrated master's um, research based. So then I joined a research group and that's where I really enjoyed like the problem solving, being in charge of your own, um, your own research and like trying to figure things out on your own instead of the structured uh, modules that we were doing when we were taught. So ultimately, that led me to do a PhD from the University of Manchester in the same group I did my master's in, but um, the group moved to Manchester, so I joined them at the start of my PhD in Manchester, and that's how I uh, came across her for State of Manchester. Um, so my PhD was uh, the toxic gas absorption and visualisation in metal organic frameworks. So for just a bit of a background, um, my work was basically making these porous materials. So they're called metal organic frameworks because you have a metal cluster, you react it with something organic and it forms like a three-dimensional structure um, which usually have um, these like pores or channels running throughout them in, uh, in various dimensions. And it's this property of these materials that can be exploited for applications such as like clean air technologies or pollution control. And I was particularly, um, interested in and worked on um, gas separation and gas absorption using toxic gases. Oh, is this one playing? Yes. Oh, <laughs> it's a bit laggy, but um, we can go with that. So the bit, as I was like going through my four years, um, I did a lot of work at um, synchrotron sites. So these are, uh, they're all over the world. Um, but the nearest one in the UK is in Didcot, oops, sorry, Didcot, um, just outside of Oxford or just within Oxford. And you've got, sorry, this is really laggy, isn't it? We'll continue. Um, so we've got diamond light source, which is where you play around with x rays, and we've got isis neutron muon source, which is where you play around with neutrons. So I spent about 60 days um, during my four years playing around with these experiments, which I ultimately just found really cool. So this is what I'm doing in the video in the top. I'm not sure how clear it is, but um, this is powder x-ray diffraction, essentially. Sorry about that. All of our um, all of our samples are on this carousel. This robot's uh, essentially just a sample changer, and we're firing x-rays um, at our powders, and the um, it's measuring the diffraction of the x-rays um, up here. So what you get out of that is kind of like a, a spectra. Um, it's just a yeah, just a plot um, on an x and y axis, and you can model that using various clever chemistry softwares, um, model optimization, and undergoing refinements to ultimately get a structure out. And this is where um, kind of I like developed like an appreciation for data analysis, and this is where it kind of like set the seed in my head of perhaps I don't want to work in the lab maybe it's data analytics and data science that I want to go down. So during my PhD, I also um, worked alongside as a laboratory teaching assistant. It's quite common in PhDs, especially in Manchester and especially for chemistry ones, where you're, you're a demonstrator in the labs. Um, and I also did a lot of school and college outreach where you visit schools to um, do, like a, do like a lesson, you take a spectrometer and it's kind of like a problem solving day. 
so that's what I did um, throughout my PhD, but also once I finished um, writing up and after my viva in the interim of when I was um, job searching. So um, if anyone's going through um, the trying to get a job at the minute, my thoughts are with you. It's, you know, it's a lengthy process. It's soul destroying. <laughs> um, but I, because I had it in my head that I'd like to maybe move away from chemistry, but still keep like STEM and data and technology. Um, I got a job, um, which is quite common. I've seen for, from a few of these talks where they send, they essentially offer to train you and then you work on client site for two years. So that was the kind of premise behind this, um, this job I did. Um, so the idea was in this case that um, they pay you the London living wage for four months whilst they train you in various data analytics, data engineering, um, um, you know, softwares and techniques, and then you're on client site for two years. However, I moved to London in March 2020, which was a particularly interesting year to move away from my security blanket of all my family, friends and my teaching assistant role. And because of COVID, um, this plan didn't go to plan <laughs> as it was due to, you know, things outside of my control. And um, so I was back on the job searching hype. Um, I was very grateful to get an interim job as a video game design tutor with a lovely company called Biotech. Um, so in this, in this role, so I was a tutor, um, tutoring kids online Zoom between the ages of nine and 12, the first, um, the first kind of like introduction to object-oriented programming. And they use um, Construct 3, which is like a game making and coding, less so coding, but more kind of like with your mouse. It's, it's fantastic. I'd really recommend looking into Biotech if you A, have children that want to get into STEM and data, or B, like you're looking for, to get involved in like data tutoring. They're a really fantastic organization. Um, so I did that for a little bit, again, back on the job hype. So I did this in the interim period of I'm in London, <laughs> away from everything. I need to pay rent, essentially. Um, and ultimately, that's how I ended up um, applying and getting a job as a data scientist in the digital research environment at Great Ormond Street. So just as a bit of information of what the DRE is. Um, the main role that we do is that we provision data for researchers from the back-end databases of the hospital electronic patient record system. So we're involved in extracting the data from these back-end systems. We um, like restructure the data, put in a bit more of a friendly format for our researchers who are working with us. And then we have, a, um, we have an organization that we work with where we upload this de-identified data to the platform and it's like a research platform that they can you know analyze the data themselves it has like an internal like um, programming software in there so it's kind of provisioning data so the clinicians or the researchers or the you know the group or people in the hospital can investigate um their research question um we also provide analytical support through open sessions so if they've got a problem with their data or they're not quite sure on statistical analyses they can come to us for advice and we can guide them through it and we work with um, a range of people, so um, university students, um, mostly from UCL, um, but also around, around, I think we're working with some people from Manchester as well. I wonder if they're on this call. Um, we work with interns, clinicians, like I said, and you know, analytical teams from IT, et cetera. Um, so I work on the operational side of things, so what like the processes within the hospital, but we also have a, a clinical research aspect to our data analytics and data science as well. So essentially we provision research for, for people in the hospital. In terms of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, um, I'd say 80% of the work I do is coding in R. Um, Fun story, I didn't actually know all before I, um, before I got the role. Um, I go through it in a little bit later, but I had a bit of a background in SQL. I was like self-teaching myself Python, but um, fully an R convert, I love it. Um, I do a lot of um, dashboarding projects, so I use um, R Shiny to, to make apps. And um, we use a targets pipeline. Um, and then for the data extraction, Mostly it's SQL from the backend databases, Python. Data visualization is a big thing, especially as I mostly work on dashboards. So I'm using ggplot and plotly. Um, and everything we do is version controlled using GitHub. Well, GitLab, which is the organizational version of Git, GitHub. 
Um, in this role, so I've been very fortunate um, to be, be able to uh, attend conferences. So we have an internal hospital conference, but also NHSR conference, which I'll talk about later as well. Um, because most of the, like the majority of what I've recently been work on, working on is um, dashboards. I provide demos to the consultants that I'm doing the work for. Uh, we do internal code reviews and I have a, an F1 doctor from a different hospital that I'm supervising trying to make cool tools to like provision easy exploratory data analytics to other members and to like other research in the hospital. So some of the projects, um, I'm very early career. Um, I finished my PhD in um, 2019. I had an online graduation. So hopefully that will be in real life in 2020, <laughs> what was meant to be in 2020. Um, and I started this job, um, I've been here for about like 16 months, coming up to 18. Um, so I've been mostly working on visualization apps um, and I did one which in the process of handing over to their team for the cardiac de department to track their weekly meetings. So this is where um, usually their processes are very manual um, it involves like going into the electronic patient record system and reading doctor's notes, reading lab notes, and it's, it's like a lengthy process. So the idea is that we as data scientists and data analytics can automate the extraction, predefine our wrangling, our, um, our processes in using a targets pipeline. And with just a few short commands, the idea is that they can change to like next week, for example, and it'll just shoot up the same analytics, but with the, like, the new data. So the idea is that we're gonna save them time essentially. I've also been involved in um, providing statistical help for academic publication. And um, I was working in collaboration with my, well, with our um, senior data scientist on a cohort comparison kind of report. So again, trying to, trying to use reproducible and, um, generalizable code where you can define disease A versus, versus disease B and it'll shoot you up an exploratory data analysis report saying like, oh, disease A, they had, you know, X amount of lab tests compared to disease B, here's their split of length of stay and all kind of stuff like that. So when I was, um, yeah, so I've gone through the, you know, the job application process a few times. <laughs> just, yeah, from the events of 2020 and finishing my PhD. And looking through the job descriptions, it's like, it actually became aware of me that I do have a lot of skills for what they're after. It wasn't just like, you know, a standing start from trying to transition into data. Um, like I said, I mentioned that um, my undergraduate, I found it quite challenging just for the amount of stuff that you had to learn. So um, that's showing you that you meet deadlines. Um, the fact that I, well, you can be interested in healthcare, you don't have to have done biology at uni, but like it showed that I have subject matter interest. Um, quite a lot from my research background, I think research in itself is like a good skill that you can, you know, you can have a look at a problem, you're facing it very different ways. In, in a PhD, you're doing something completely new and novel, so you're more likely than not going to be like slamming your head against a brick wall, and you've got a problem solved around that brick wall. So, to get by. <laughs> um, so you've got problem solving skills, which I think are ultimately very important in the world of data science. Um, I was involved in publication writing for grant proposals for the synchrotron time that I've mentioned previously. Um, you had supervision when I was a, a teaching assistant in the labs. And yeah, I did some data analysis from the outputs of my experiments and we underwent model optimization to make sure that your, your structures are correct. So there's a lot of like transferable skills that, yeah, I didn't have an undergraduate degree or really any defined experience as a data scientist. But I think there's a lot of things that you, you can do, like even if we didn't go to university, there's like so many things that like can be transferred across and they're relevant. I also wrote down here from Firetech, so I, yeah, I was tutoring kids aged nine to 12 um, who were fantastic. They were so lovely. Um, but it's me learning video game design. And then I'm, you know, 
refactoring that in a different way so I can present that and teach kids it. so it's all about science communication and documentation which is also really important I'll do conferences based to like the general public versus I'm demoing a cardiac specific app to cardiac consultants you just have to be aware of like your difference in audience which I think is really important so I guess um this this was me I still have some ties to chemistry to be fair and then hopefully this is this is now me so how have I transferred what do I think is important from going from uh, chemist Lydia to data science Lydia um it goes without saying that uh that trick there was a level of you know self-learning and training so yes I was on the the kind of grad scheme to begin with but you know things happened and um, so there was a lot of like self-learning so I'd really recommend going to like online courses um a lot of them there's there's loads out there and a lot of them do offer like the odd free lesson so I'd recommend like trying out a few you don't just have to go to the most popular one it might not be your learning style I know I tried quite a few of them I found one of them particularly patronizing another one and just sometimes I just love a book so it's nice to like yeah just find out what is what is best for your learning style really um goes without saying webinars and seminars I've put a few communities here obviously the one in the middle here for the state of Manchester it's fantastic I've been to a few um our ladies talks where they uh, introduced me to one of my packages in R, which is probably my most used package now. It's called Janitor. It's essentially in data wrangling. It sorts out all your column names automatically. Well, not automatically, but super quickly. It's a very clever package and I use it all the time. So again, getting hints and tips on how I can be better at my job now. And also the NHSR community is a fantastic community and they have a lot of like teaching resources um, and tutorials on their YouTube and their um, within their community. They've just started a podcast as well, which is very exciting. I'm hoping I can be involved in that in the not too distant future. And you don't have to work for the NHS to, to be involved in it. Just have it like, you know, a passion for healthcare, which is, yeah, it's really interesting data. I found blog posts really useful, um, especially on Medium. It's, you know, it's fine doing an online course where they like coach you through it, but seeing someone else's like process of how they've like, you know, attempted a problem I found quite useful. Um, and I'd recommend like undergoing personal projects. So it's very difficult to hold down something to get some money, self teach yourself, you know, to upskill and also apply for jobs. So if anyone's going through that, like I fully like hats off to you, it's awful. <laughs> but um, the personal projects I did was I, um, if people are familiar with Strava, it's like a sporting app, it tracks my runs essentially. Um, I requested my own data from them and they send you a big Excel file with all of, in my case, all of the runs I did in the past four years or something. Um, I thought I'd, it'd be a good start to try and just um, try and replicate the stats that Strava give you. So we're talking about like your, you know, your mileage per month. Um, I did like a geo map. So like tracked one of the races I did. Um, I actually, uh, I dabbled in some I mean, it's, it's only a text cloud from my uh, from my captions, but that didn't go anywhere because apparently I'm quite, yeah, I moan about the rain a lot when I was living in Manchester. So, um, but yeah, it was interesting to, you know, think of a project myself and then undergo it, especially as I had limited like experience. And then uh, meetups is going to be a common theme, but it goes without saying, like, we're here now as Herpa State of Manchester and there's loads of meetups out there. So this leads on to data experience. Again, I had like, you know, relatively like little, um, like, well, I hadn't had a data job before and I was fresh out of essentially university. So it's my first, I don't know, career job that I tried to get. Um, again, I've mentioned personal projects like the struggle one I did. Um, I wasn't too um, familiar with GitHub. I did a tiny bit of training in the, in the small amount of time I had at that grad scheme. Um, but fully recommend. I think it's very common to have people's personal GitHub profiles um, on their CV. Um, and I'm working on that now. I'm trying to get better. We use GitLab at work. I do need to do some more personal projects, I think. And again, online projects, there's hackathons, there's, you know, you can get with communities to help each other out. I think that's also a good idea. One thing I've done again, um, which I think is really important, actually, is trying to expand your network or like trying to 
you know, utilize your networks you have. So again, meetups. <laughs> um, I've put this here as like reach out to your contacts. So in Manchester, I was heavily involved in the like in various running communities and sporting communities. So this is I used to compete with Sail Harriers Manchester. I don't know if anybody has heard of them in Manchester. Um, they're lovely. Um, I had a really great time in terms of sport, but also the there was a lot of people at sale. So I was kind of on like the, the younger age range. There was a lot of people who were like sedimented in their careers and they were settled in their careers. And so it's just, everyone went above and beyond to help me, um, to help me out. And it like, I ended up having like meetings with some data CEOs. Like I was just chatting to everyone, taking people out for coffees. Like it's there, yeah, just tapping to networks that you might not think you've got, but you do. Um, I had um, lovely recruiters. Um, I think sometimes recruiters get a bit of a bad reputation, but I had lovely ones. And they were really like gen genuinely like empathetic with the situation. And obviously it's their work as well, isn't it? And I'd also suggest, um, I don't know, getting a LinkedIn or sorting out your LinkedIn, because um, that's how I, um, I had a few interests from that from getting a job as well. Um, yeah, kind of a whistle stop tour of, who I am and how I've got to, um, to be in the job that I am. I hope it's been useful. If anybody's got any questions like healthcare, coding or anything, please, please ask away. Thank you, Lydia. We need a round of applause.